Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. Joining me right now on the phone from Washington, D.C. is Congresswoman Ileana ross Layton, and She represents the 27th District of Florida and serves as chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee on the Middle East and South Asia. Thanks for being with us, as always. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. All right, first, Congresswoman, I want to get your reaction. As, as someone who was born in Cuba but was forced to flee uh, that nation under the Castro regime while you were a small child, what did you think about President Obama's handshake with Raul Castro at Nelson's Man, uh, Nelson Mandela's funeral today? Well, it was nauseating because uh, I was born in Cuba, as you pointed out. I came here uh, when I was a small child with my family, fleeing uh, the aggression of, uh, of the communist tyranny in, in Cuba. And uh, to see the, the, the president of the United States uh, shake hands with a, with a sadistic murderer, which is what Raul Castro is and what he represents, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it is nauseating. Now, I had, had the opportunity to ask Secretary Kerry today uh, about that handshake, and I said, sometimes a handshake is just a handshake, but when the leader of the free world uh, shakes the bloody hand of a ruthless dictator like Raul Castro, it becomes a propaganda coup for the tyrant. Raul Castro uses that hand to sign orders to repress and jail democracy advocates. And I pointed out what an irony it is that today is International Human Rights Day. And as we were speaking, as I asked Secretary Kerry, who's appearing before our, our Foreign Affairs Committee, um, lobbyists, uh, ad advocates, freedom lovers, opposition leaders in Cuba were trying to commemorate International Human Rights that Day. And for that, they were detained and they were, they were beaten. So I know what Raul Castro will do with those photos. He will, he will show it in, in all the state-sponsored media because they don't have free media in Cuba. And, uh, and he is a man who does not, uh, does, not, does not respect human rights at all. And, and I asked Secretary Kerry to make it clear uh, to the world that uh, U.S. policy toward this cruel and sadistic dictatorship is not going to be change, changing because of the handshake, because we need to get that message of hope to the opposition leaders, of which there are many in Cuba. Well, we'll talk about more. We'll talk a little bit more about your meeting with uh, Secretary Kerry in just a second. But f following up on this, you know, obviously the cameras are rolling here, as we've seen. And, and I don't know, people can make their own judgments, but snubbing Castro may have looked bad as well. How would you advise the president uh, on how he should handle these types of situations when he encounters a guy like Raul Castro, if that ever happens again? Well, you know, he's got to know that this was going to happen because he's sitting in that, uh, in, in that area where there's security, where there are other uh, folks who representing their country. It's not that Raul Castro merits uh, saying that he represents uh, anything but a dictatorship, but he's got to know that he's going to be in that situation. There's really no reason to extend the hand. You can you can casually ignore someone, but, but look, I'm not going to make more of it than it is. Maybe it was just protocol and things that happened. What I want to make sure is that there's going to be no change in U.S. policy, because I worry about that. Uh, more than I do about a handshake, because we've seen a change in, in U.S. policy toward Iran, and that's what brought Secretary Kerry here to speak before us in our Foreign Affairs Committee, and I care about that more than whether the president is smiling and shaking hands and bowing down to somebody. So All right, I want fair to make enough. sure Let's, that we are as tough as we can uh, against the dictatorship and in favor of the Cuban people. All right, well, you made the transition for me because we also want to talk about Iran and that uh, hearing on Capitol Hill today. A lot of people have questioned whether President Obama commands enough for respect from our adversaries, and we can we can point to this uh, incident with Raul Castro as an example there. Uh, some some folks say this applies to well as well with the uh, developments with Iran. Tuesday, Secretary of State John Kerry was on the Hill talking to your subcommittee, trying to convince uh, a bipartisan group of lawmakers on the House and Senate side not to move ahead with new sanctions against Iran while the Islamic Republic tries to work with the U.S. and other world powers on a longer-term weapons deal. Uh, Iran says it's, start, it's already started to open up its facilities, a part of that temporary plan that was hatched in Geneva. But some senators and House members, and I assume you're in this group, want to tighten those sanctions even further now. Is Secretary Kerry going to be able to convince anyone like yourself or Democratic Senator Bob Menendez that these new sanctions might be a bad idea? I don't think that he's going to be successful, but it'll, it is going to be difficult to pass these new sanctions. We passed them in the House. They're pending in the Senate. And uh, the power of one senator, just Harry Reid stopping it, is, is uh, the rules are so different there. But I, I told the secretary that he had said on 60 Minutes that on a nuclear deal with Iran, he said a bad deal is worse than no deal. And I said, this is a bad deal because um, 
it's really the death knell of our sanctions policy. It threatens our closest ally, the democratic Jewish state of, of Israel. And, and uh, the, we're accepting Iran's illegitimate claim to a right to enrich. We say, oh, no, they don't have that right. But Iran says, hey, this deal gives us this right. And that's why we were so eager to, to sign it. So I think this is what's going to happen. We set the bar so low. It's lower than U.S. law. It's lower than the U.N. Security Council resolutions that Iran is going to invite the world to come to uh, its uh, land, inspect everything, because it will not be in violation of the deal. I think that they will comply, and we will be effusive of, oh, look what a wonderful uh, country this is. They are complying with the deal. Yeah, because we lowered the bar. This is a lower threshold than the U.N. Security Council resolution. It's lower than... U.S. law. So when you make the stakes low, yeah, they're going to comply. And then I'm telling you, six months from now, we're going to say, boy, President Obama really deserved that Nobel Peace Prize because uh, he really worked out this deal to have a nuclear-free Iran. And all we're doing is accepting the nuclear power of Iran and fooling ourselves into thinking that they're using it for peaceful purposes. Now, Iran's foreign minister does say if there are any new sanctions, this Geneva agreement will be over and any hopes of a longer term nuclear weapons deal will be gone, too. Do you think in that case that he's just bluffing if there are new sanctions? I mean, we've seen how these sanctions have crippled the Iranian economy and obviously, you know, kind of opened things up to, to negotiating with, with the nation. But do you think that the Iranians are bluffing at this point, that if these new sanctions are passed, that they still might be willing to negotiate? Well, I think that the Iranians have nothing to lose with continuing to negotiate because they're negotiating from strength and we're negotiating from weakness. And I think that um, when, when Secretary Kerry says these sanctions have worked because it's brought Iranians to the negotiation table, that never has been the case of why we had sanctions. We had sanctions to cripple the Iranian economy and to force Iran to abandon its nuclear capability. It wasn't, they weren't set up so that they could negotiate with us. They weren't a negotiating tool. It was to dismantle everything and, and weaken this dictatorship. So uh, I think that we, we keep lowering the bar and lowering the expectations so that then we can salute Iran and say, wow, you see, they've complied with everything. Aren't we great? We were really tough. And in fact, we have not been tough at all. Sanctions are needed. We passed them in the House. We need to pass them in now in the Senate. And I am the author of the toughest sanctions legislation that we have on the books right now. And uh, yet the administration keeps giving waivers and they keep giving exemptions. So even if we were just to uh, enforce the existing sanctions, we would be in a better shape. All right. Well, John Kerry will be back on Capitol Hill tomorrow, this time talking to the Senate. But you mentioned Senator Harry Reid has a stop on the, on the sanction at this point. But we'll see where things go from here. Congresswoman well, Thank Ili you. Look forward to discussing it as it moves along. Well, we'll talk to you again soon. Congresswoman Ileana Ross-Layton, and thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching Newsmax.